Hey guys, welcome to another A-Level Maths revision video. In this video today, we're going to take a look at the arithmetic series. So this kind of basically introduces you to series along with recurrence relation and geometric series. So arithmetic series, basically we're adding um, the same number each time in our series. So for example here, we have a first term A, we have the common difference D, so that's what we're adding. Um, obviously we could subtract that as well. The sum of the first 10 terms of this sequence is 162. So we want to show that 10a plus 45d is equal to 162. So I don't actually think this question is immediately clear what's required. Um, so basically you're just asked to show that 10a plus 45d is equal to 162. Well, let's just change the pen colour before we start. The big giveaway for this question here is the fact that it's equal to 162. Remember, we're told the sum of the first 10 terms of the sequence is 162. So what I'm going to try and do here is, is set up the sum of the first 10 terms. So that would be S10. We know the first term is A, common difference is D, so we won't bother writing them down. We'll just apply them where appropriate. And then we're going to use the summation formula. So this is giving you formula book. So in this case, it's going to be N over 2. So that's 10 over 2. Because N is 10 in this case, 10 terms. And we divide that, oh, sorry, we do 10 over 2, and then we times that by 2a plus n minus 1d. Well, a times 2, that'd just be 2a. Then we add n minus 1 times it by the common difference d. Well, n is 10, so that's going to be 10 minus 1 times d, so that's 9d here. Okay, and we know the sum of the first 10 terms is equal to 162. Okay, so 10 over 2 is 5 times 2a plus 9d is equal to 162. Now at this stage here, don't divide by the 5. Remember, you want to show this actual expression here in part a. Okay? We want to show that 10a plus 45d is equal to 162. And the way we do that is by expanding this left-hand side here. 5 times 2a gives us 10a, and 5 times 9d gives us 45d which is equal to 162 as required. Okay, so that's our part A there. Part B, we're told that the sixth term of the sequence is 17. We're asked to write down a second equation in A and D. So just a nice easy one, one mark here. We're asked to find a second equation here. Well, we're going to use the fact that the sixth term in the sequence is 17. So that would be the sixth term, so that's a6. And remember then to find the, basically this is the nth term here. It's going to be a plus n minus 1d. Well, that's just a, so that's the first term a. n minus 1, well n is 6, so that's going to be plus 5d. And we know that that is equal to 17. So we have a plus 5d is equal to 17. Okay, so that's part b. And then finally, part C, we're asked to find the value of A and the value of D. So the reason why we're asked to find the second equation is because we're going to solve these um, simultaneous equations. So this question kind of holds your hand for it to guide you. Um, so that's why we're asked to find that second equation. So what I'm going to do is write down my two equations. 10A plus 45D is equal to 162. We also have a plus 5d is equal to 17. So what I need to do here is match one of the coefficients. So I can match the a here. I can match the 5. Um, I'm going to match the, the coefficients of the d's here. So if I times this second equation by 9, I'd get 9a plus 45d being equal to 153. Okay. So solving simultaneous equations, so if we just technically get rid of that one, it's just not to confuse us. So I'm solving these two equations. So this should be pretty basic GCSE maths. But remember, if the coefficients are the same, then we subtract. So 10a minus 9a, that gives us a. This would be 0. And then 162 minus 153 gives us 9 there. Okay, so a is equal to 9. But all we need to know is find the value of d. So just using substitution here. 
no matter which of these the original two equations you sub this into, if I use a plus 5d is equal to 17, that logically seems the easiest to me. That would be 9 plus 5d is equal to 17. Subtracting 9 off both sides, I get 5d is equal to 8. So in that case, d will be 8 over 5. Okay, so we've got our value of a and our value of d there. So Seven marks and sort of like question, but that question is a pretty standard quant, uh, style question. They're just using the applications of our formulas, um, in part A using the summation, and then part B finding the nth term. So, hopefully, that one wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at this next question here. So, we don't have much room to write for this one, um, so we'll see if we can just about make it. So, part A, we're asked to find the sum of all the even numbers from 2 to 100 inclusive. So we want to know what the sum of 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 all the way up to plus 100 is. Well, clearly we're not expected to sit here and actually work that out by hand. We're going to set this up as an arithmetic series. So our first term, A, that will be 2. The common difference here, D, will also be 2. We're adding 2 to get to each term. Okay. The only thing that's left here now is how many terms are we going to have? Well, if we're looking at even numbers from 2 to 100, in that case, we're going to have 50 terms. So we'll look, what we're looking for here is S, 50. So we can use the easy formula here because we know the first term and we know the last term is 100. So the first term is 2. In this case, L is 100. So using the nice easy formula, it's going to be N over 2, where N is 50, times that by A, which is 2, plus 100. This is 25 times 102. When you plug that into your calculator, what you should get here is 2550. Okay, so that's the sum of all the even numbers from 2 to 100 inclusive. So that's part A done. Let's take a look at part B now. So we clear this. So let's start kind of at the top here. So in this arithmetic series, we've got k plus 2k plus 3k, all the way up to 100. We know k is a positive integer, and k is also a factor of 100. We want to find, in terms of k, an expression for the number of terms in this series. Well, the easiest way here, in my opinion, to find the expression for the number of terms in the series is to consider the very last term. Okay, so we don't know how many terms that is, that last term. Well, let's just say it's n. So using the nth term formula, that would be 100 is equal to a, which is my first term. So in this case, a is equal to k. That's my first term in the series. So this is equal to k plus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 times by the common difference, which in this question, like you can see, we're just adding k each time k, and then we got 2k, and then we got 3k, so on and so on. So my common difference here is k, so we're going to times this by k. So here now, if I just expand this bracket here with this k, and we start solving here. So this is going to be k plus nk minus k. So the k and the minus k, they just cancel. So what I've got now is nk is equal to 100. And what I'm looking for is n. That's the number of terms in this series. So to find n, all I do here is simply divide by k. So n is equal to 100 divided by k. So that's the first part. And the second part, we want to show that the sum of the series is 50 plus 5,000 divided by k. So let's take a look at this one. That was part i. And then we move on to i, i. So for this one, well, I'm going to just use my summation formula here. So I've got S, N. So it's going to be a half of my number of terms, which we've just worked out to be 100 over K. Half 100 over K. And then we're going to times that by K plus 100. The first term plus the last term. Okay. 
for using the easy plan here. So my first term is k, my last term is 100, so k plus 100. If we just start simplifying all of this, a half of 100 over k, so that'll just simply give us 50 over k. And then we times it by k plus 100. Simplify it in here, 50 over k times k, so that'll just leave us with 50. And 50 over k times 100, that'll give us 5,000 over k, which is exactly what we needed. Okay, that's what we're asked to show for the second part. So as required. And then finally, if we move on to part C here, we're given a new series, or in this, in this case, a sequence. So the first term is 2k plus 1. So A is 2k plus 1. So to work out the difference here, it would be, for example, the second term minus the first term. So that would be 2k plus 3. And you can verify that using the third term minus the second term. Again, you should get 2k plus 3 there for the difference. So all we want to find here is the 50th term. So again, we're going to use the nth term formula. So a 50. That's going to be the first term, a plus n minus 1 times a common difference. So the first term is a, which is 2k plus 1. n minus 1, so that's 50 minus 1, so that's 49. Lots of 2k plus 3. So 49 times 2k, so that would be 98k. So we just write this out in full. 2k plus 1, so that's just my first term there. 49 times 2k, 98k. And then 49 times 3 will give me 147. And if I collect everything together, what I'd get here is 2k plus 98k, which is 100k. And then finally 1 plus 147, we get 148. So that's our 50th term there. So hopefully that's not too bad. Two marks for that. Um, and that is our answer in its simplest form there. So job done. Let's take a look at the very last question there. So this one is quite wordy, um, so let's just take it slowly here. So let's do part A first. So Andy's paying into a savings scheme. In year one, he pays in 600 pounds. So what we're told there is that A is 600. His payments increase by 120 pounds each year. So 720 in year two, 840 in year three. So what they've just told us there is that the common difference is 120. So now we've got A, we've got D, we can pretty much work out whatever we need now. Um, that would be required of us. So we're asked to find out how much he pays in year 10. So we're looking for the nth term there for the 10th year. Okay, so A10. So again, that's going to be A plus N minus 1 times D. So A is 600 plus N minus 1, where N is 10, so that's 9 times 120. And if you just put that into your calculator, what you should get there, don't get this is money, so this would be 1,680. So that's our first part. Part B, look, I'm hoping we have enough room for it, let's give it a go. So it's a bit of a longer one, five marks. So we've got another um, saving scheme now. So this is Kim, and she starts at the same time as Andy. So in year one, she pays in 130 pounds. So let's just write Kim's down. So hers is 130, and then each year she pays 210. Uh, I'm sorry, it tells you that it she pays 210 in year two, 290 in year three, so on and so on. So in that case, her common difference d would just simply be 80. Okay. So we've got a, we've got d. What we're told is that the, at the end of year n. Andy has paid in total twice as much money into his savings scheme as Kim's paid into her savings scheme. We just want to find how many years that is. So hopefully it kind of jumps out what we're looking for here, and that's the sum after n years. Okay, we're going to work out the sum of n years for both of these, but remember Andy has paid in total twice as much as Kim has. 
So let's just work out the sum first for uh, Andy, and then we'll do it for Kim. So we do that up here. So that'll be SM. So we should really use capital M, because that's what we're doing here at the end of the year N. Um, so hopefully I won't miss this as I'm going through. So that's a bit N over 2. And then we're going to times this by 2A. So if A is 600, that would be 1,200. Plus N minus 1 um, times the common difference D. So that'd be plus N minus 1 times 120. Okay, so that's for Andy. So now if we do Kim's um, total. So again, this is SM. And again, it will be N over 2. So her first term is 130. So 2A will be 130 times 2. So that's 260. And then again, we do N minus 1 times the common difference, which for Kim is 80. So what we've got now is our two summations after N years. But what we're told is that Andy's basically paid twice as much as Kim. So if we write that mathematically, what we've got here then, um, well, obviously I'm just getting all this at the bottom. Just so we've got enough room. So we're writing this down here. What we've got then is n over 2. So this is Andy's is equal to two lots of Kim's, so 1,200 plus n minus 1 times 120 is equal to 2n over 2. So n over 2 times 2, 2n over 2, 260, so this is just Kim's now, plus n minus 1 times d, which is 80. So now, all I'm looking to do here is just solve this equation in terms of capital M. The first thing I can just do here is simply just to divide through by this n over 2. n over 2 here, I've got an n over 2 here, so dividing through by n over 2, I'm going to get 1,200 plus, expanding this, so 120n minus 120, which is equal, so dividing by n over 2, I get left with a 2 here. So 2 times 260 gives us 520 plus, so this would be 80n and then times by 2, so that's 160n. So just be very careful with the algebra here. Minus 1 times 8 is minus 80, and again times that by 2, that would be minus 160. So now notice we've just got n's on both sides, so I'm just going to have to collect these on one side and then just solve for capital N. So if I do that, I'm going to subtract 120n off both sides, so that's going to give me 40n. And then if I collect um, everything else on the other side, I get 40n is equal to 720. Now dividing both sides by 40, I get n is equal to 720 divided by 40, which is equal to 18. Okay, so therefore n is 18. Um, so at the end of year 18. Okay, that's what we find at the end of year 18. And there we have it guys, so a bit of a longer one, um, but hopefully mathematically not too bad. So like always, hope this video has helped. Um, any issues, anything that's unclear, like always, just leave a comment down below. Cheers.